Hello there guys and welcome back to Reborn with Michael Watson. Today we're talking about reality transurfing because there was a couple of you that commented on a previous video that said, can you talk about this subject? So the thing was, I went into research mode. I was like, my superpower is simplifying these subjects. But actually, this subject is huge and it's amazing. If you want to change your life, I mean, we need to think about reality transurfing because I think it explains everything. It explains the law of assumption. It explains some of Neville Goddard's absolute fundamental ideas, Joseph Murphy's, uh, Joe Dispenza's. <coughs> it is surreal. So if you need to uh, connect deeper to your spiritual side and you want to learn how to create, reality transurfing is an amazing way to go about it. So firstly, let me um, put this into a category. So there's, there's kind of 10 points around uh, reality transurfing, and I'm going to speak on them today. The first point is the space of variations. Now this for me is magical because it actually does explain one of Neville Goddard's most wonderful um, explanations where he says all reality is already done. Everything that ever it is and ever will be is already created. We just sort of align to it. Well, in reality transurfing, what it means is <coughs> there are multiple expressions, multiple universes almost, of reality. So there's a lot of every possible uh, reality that there could be exists now. And what we do is we actually, reality transurf, we, we go into these different realities and we experience the reality that is uh, aligned to our energy. So everything that can exist already exists since there are infinite amount of variations, thought forms, arrangements of energy. There is also an endless number of possible life tracks. There is an I as a king, a beggar, a drug addict, a man, a woman, a name, an atheist, an agnostic. So there's every version of me that could ever exist. There's innumerable roles that we can play. This means the world as we know it is a memory data and informational structure that contains an infinite amount of manifestations and their individualized preferences, beliefs and attachments. So actually what you need to understand there then is that is quite freeing because in a reality I am uh, in a wonderful marriage, uh, all my, all my um, emotional, physical, psychological, spiritual needs. I mean, is everything happening outside my window today or what? Excuse me about that. I'm in the reality where it's noisy outside. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is everything that I could ever want to experience exists somewhere. So what that does then, it really leans us into the idea that reality is already done. See, when God, you know, we put into our mind that when God uh, created reality, he said it was good and very good. He was done. So... We have to accept that all realities are created already and we just align energetically to experience those realities. And so, so basically put it this way, if we choose to hold hate, then our world will reflect that hostility and divisions back to us. If we choose love and harmony, the world, will witness, uh, world we witness will become a representation of that very variation. So what we're saying is, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he sees. So we really want to align to that possibility. I do that with uh, inner self-talk, prayer therapy, energy release. Find peace. I, I think the ideal place to find is peace. Find peace and you will transurf into a reality full of peace in every area of life. Um, the next one is pendulums, okay? So when they're talking about this, there's when there is a lot of energy invested in a particular direction, this creates a pendulum. And they are familial, societal, religious, political and, and national pendulums. So what he's trying to say is when we are aware of their influence, pendulums can be detrimental. Uh, the use of indoctrination by organised religion and feeding of mass hysteria through misinformation and deceit is one example. So often you'll see in the news, and that's why I tell you, do not, don't dare watch the news. Because they're trying to push your energy in a, diff in a direction of a pe pendulum, which is going to force you into the ideal state that they want you to be in. Okay? The news media even says here on this sort of breakdown, the news media, for example, is a giant pendulum that feeds information to the public. It derives its power from its subscribers. The news media, however, can also be controlled by other more influential pendulums, such as special interest groups, powerful corporations and political parties. So when there is groups of people coming together, they can actually create a pendulum. That's why 
going at these events like Dr. Joe Dispenza puts on, you watching this video together with the thousands that will, we're creating a pendulum of energy in the direction we would like to experience. So if we could get enough people experiencing peace, harmony, flow in themselves, we actually can start to create a pendulum towards that. Um, <clears throat> now, let's continue into the next bit. There's the wave of fortune. So according to Vadim, Zilland, who is the writer, there is no such thing as a constructive pendulum. Okay, that's an interesting thought, so we might need to do another video on that. The reasoning is such that if a pendulum receives energy from its adherents, there is nothing notably creative about it. Even if the adherent or member receives benefit from it, he or she still has to adhere to certain rules within the functioning of the pendulum. Okay, that's interesting. Again, this limits the adherent within the boundaries of an energetic structure. So basically, when we get too invested in pendulums, we actually uh, <coughs> rob ourselves of potential because we're just led so much by that force of energy. The antidote, though, that which he says is uh, pendulums is the wave of fortune. It is a set of circumstances that are favourable to you personally. It is a set of lifelines that are auspicious for you personally. So since every conceivable life track already exists in that space of alternatives, there is only one thing available is to choose it. You can choose happiness, success at the same time, but still remain restricted and swayed by the pendulum of what other people think. So this is where I connect it to what I'm trying to teach. <clears throat> in the Bible, when Jesus heals the leper, he says, go forth and tell no one of what happened here. The whole point behind that then is that when you keep telling people of your spiritual practice, when you keep telling people you've had a spiritual healing, they're going to have an opinion. Now, if you tell too many people and you get too many opinions, they're going to sway you in the pendulum of energy that way, which is going to bring you back to a more restrictive, hard place. You know what I mean? But the cascade of fortune follows if one lets himself be joyful. So this is the point, you know. So joy, peace, harmony, flow, this allows the wave of fortune to happen. You have to, This I talk about this a lot, you align to the divine presence. What is the divine presence but flow, peace, harmony, beauty, abundance? It is all of those things. So when you align your energy to that, you're going to experience that. You're going to see it in your life in many wonderful ways. So excess potential is the next one, number four. <coughs> life tends towards balance. Now, if you've been watching my uh, videos, you're going to really get this. So the body wants to find balance. The earth wants to find balance. Everything has a, a, a mathematical divine law and order to it. You know? So if excess potential is when one attributes inflated importance to anything. This creates a distorted prejudiced perception of reality and, and balancing forces will come to show what needs to be addressed. This is what I love. So this actually is really interesting because it brings up the age old question of are your problems really problems or should you celebrate them? See what I want you to notice there is when a problem comes it's just showing you an area of your life where you haven't got balance. An area of your life where you're not at peace with it, where you're trying to sway it so intently, so forcefully, that actually you're creating a pendulum against what you want. So you're going to get problems come up, okay? Um, now, have you ever noticed that whatever you place excessive importance on usually evades you? So this is what I talk about a lot, divine indifference. Divine indifference. Once you've put intention, when you make it so vital, so important for it to actually express, you actually get into the energy of lack. You see how there, all these teachings are the same, really. <clears throat> so you disconnect yourself from it, you, met, you take away the importance of that thing. But when I say normalizing, in my last video I say normalize, normalize abundance, normalize love. Don't think that I've got to add an excessive gratitude or importance to it. No, 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 no. Just make it feel natural to you and it will become yours, you know? Do not try to overcome obstacles. Reduce the amounts of amount of importance you project onto them. Do you see what I mean? So that's what I teach here with noticing the energy and releasing it. You actually become at peace with what is. Once it has no energy to feed it, whether you're healing or what, it cannot express anymore, okay? So induced transition is number five. 
Road rage just doesn't appear out of nowhere. It's an accumulation of unreleased, unresolved anger that builds up over time and expresses itself when triggered by external stuff. Now I talk about this also. This is why reality transurfing has blown my mind. It literally seems to be the answer to everything, really. Uh, it's You see how if you do not become consciously aware, you're just going to compound an issue. I've seen it in my life recently with a fear that I had. And it just compounded over time until it had to express itself in a way that shocked me out of it and brought me back to uh, awareness on it. And when it when the awareness came, now I see how to improve it by letting go a bit more. So according to the principles of transurfing, we layer our worlds with thoughts and emotionalized beliefs. So when we have a negative self-image, our complaints worsen things and aggravate our shortcomings. This is how it works. You come up against circumstances that disappoint you and so you express your dissatisfaction which then a aggravates the situation even more. Your discontent comes back to you like a triple force boomerang. So basically when a problem comes up see it as a chance to let go rather than something that needs to be addressed. Do you know what I'm saying? <coughs> An induced transition is accompanied by a negative event in a personal life layer okay so that's that's where they usually come up the alternative flows number six here when you go with the flow the world meets you halfway now as much as i love that i actually think going with the flow the world doesn't just meet you halfway it, it takes you i think you ride the wave of success you ride the wave of love of fortune going with the flow i think is one of the most important things where there is no resistance we dance with what is presented this is the point of someone like Michael Singer when they say to uh, surrender, let go of w the life having to go the way that you need it to, to be okay, to be enough. So it's when you've got hostility against what is presented, we worry, stress, grind, which only leads to more struggle. When we're at war with our experience, issues escalate and nothing gets accomplished. Because look at all that energy. All that energy is in fighting rather than potential. <clears throat> so don't fight against your illness. Don't fight against your lack of relationship. Don't fight against your abundance. Actually just start to let go of the resistance. It actually, this is what I talk about a lot. You don't need to be more positive. You just need to be less negative. There is a natural law and order once you let go. Okay, so that's that one. The seven, number seven is intent. It is not desire that is realized, but intention, which is, it, which is the resoluteness to have and to act. So this is an interesting one because I just worked with two young millionaires and they were so intent on becoming millionaires from a young age that they've achieved it because <coughs> intention rather than just it being a desire a desire means that it's something that is beyond you an intention means that it's something that you are going and go for everyone desires to be wealthy everyone desires to be healthy do they actually go for it or do they let it just remain an unresolved desire okay and what i have to say with that is you need to listen to joseph murphy on the withered hand desire is meant to be realized otherwise it leads to frustration so become intent on what you're going to achieve and put your focus towards it. Uh, number eight, slides and visualization. Now I've talked about this with Neville Goddard. I'm not a massive visualizer. Uh, I'm more of a sort of uh, <laughs> flamboyant word speaker, you know? But according to reality transserving model, there is both inner and outer intention. Inner intention is me enforcing my personal will. It's limited because it's based on old tapes and a limited sense of self. That's interesting, really. But again, don't overthink about this. This is more about you trying to force something. So what I want must happen. Whereas outer intention, on the other hand, is allowance and trust. It is the concentration of attention on how the goal realizes itself. So you get a goal, you keep it in your mind, you're very gentle about it, you just become intentional, you start to realize that if I start to flow with what comes up, it's like the bridge of incidences that Neville Goddard talks about. I have an intention, I don't let reality pull me away from that potential, and now, now a flow happens. I go across the bridge of incidences that are going to take me to there. <clears throat> Good. Last couple there. Soul frail. So let's talk about this one, number nine. According to reality transurfing, every individual is unique. So when you try to be like another person, we are turning our backs on the magnificence of our individuality. The soul frail is innate and, it, um, <coughs> excuse me, 
uh, and often covered by suppressed feelings and limiting beliefs. So this is an interesting thing. How many of you have judged yourself against someone else? How many of you have judged yourself against um, someone else's success? You know, that which you um, condemn only happens to you. So if you're condemning someone for being successful, they're liars, cheats, frauds. You're only going to get that in your life where you're cheated, lied to, and, and fraudulent activity happens. So it, what that means is celebrate everyone's uniqueness, but also be content in your own that you are on the journey you're meant to be on. And if you can surrender to life's little nudges, it's going to take you to the realization of your soul's purpose. And that is quite wonderful. And, and, it, and it already exists. Every potential of you already exists, so you can go into it. Uh, last one, number 10 here. Goals and doors. A goal is something that gives you real pleasure, something that gives you a feeling of joy and a feeling of a feast of life. So again, this is like the thing in uh, Desire, you know, that Joseph Murphy talks about, the withered hand. You know, many people who are working in a job they hate, many people who are doing in a relationship they don't want to be in anymore, they're, they're letting their hand get withered. They're, they're coming up against something that is inside them saying there's something more but they don't listen to that desire they don't see it as divine so they don't go with the goal they don't aim for anything they just sort of remain and it and it starts to eat away at you one does not need to fight for happiness one merely recognizes that happiness exists right here and right now on the current lifeline or it doesn't exist at all when we are unhappy, it is because we perceive life through old tapes and filters of our limiting beliefs. We mistakenly make our happiness contingent on fleeting things and impertinent symbols. We suffer our feelings and our circumstances when we choose to let go and decide on another way of looking at things. Okay, so as what we're trying to say there then again, this is about surrendering, letting go of something outside of yourself being the force of happiness here. Make your goal to feel happy now, regardless of what is going on in your life. This is what I did when I changed my life. I made it about how I felt. I no longer wanted to feel the same way anymore. I wanted to change. I wanted to change and feel different whether life represented it physically or not. Well, what happened is it's represented it physically, emotionally and spiritually when I made the inner world, my inner environment, most important. And from this perspective, that is because I changed the literal expression of myself and perception of my life to go on to another form of creation that is me at a certain level of success, peace and happiness. Can I rise up to the next level? Can you? Well, take on these lessons and see what it does. I'll see you at the next one, guys.